Russell Brand is a well-known British comedian who has made his way all the way up to becoming a Hollywood star, starring in many movies alongside some very, very top-rate Hollywood actors. He's also got a very successful YouTube channel, and obviously the accusations that have been thrown at him with Channel 4's uh, In Plain Sight video kind of insinuate that he has been not only a sexual deviant, because he has publicly expressed his uh, previous history with drugs and alcohol and sex addiction, uh, so that's nothing new, but they are now uh, have four or five women who are accusing him uh, of being a of having raped them, not being a rapist, but having raped these four women. Now, I've never really been a Russell Brand fan, um, but I have been in a position as a security officer where a chap I knew, a young man I knew, uh, not directly, but a friend of a friend, so I, I was aware of them, but never really spoke to them or never really had a relationship with them as a friend. Uh, they were accused of rape. It was in all the local papers, and um, their entire life was destroyed. Lost his job, fell out with his family, um, having a really terrible time, and he was going to court, and it very much looked like he was going to get convicted. Fortunately for him, and I do mean fortunately, he was very, very lucky. On the last day before the CCTV footage was wiped in uh, in the uh, shopping centre where I worked, the police came and asked if perhaps we had any video cameras pointing in that particular direction. Now you might think, why didn't you put that evidence forward towards them? The reality is, we didn't know where the offence took place. Nobody saw it. Uh, we had no idea that it was captured on this camera. Anyway, fortunately for him, the camera footage was saved, and when it was reviewed, her dispute, uh, her claim was absolutely disputed to the point where she was basically forcing him to have sex with her. Now that would have ruined that man's life. Uh, last I heard of him, he moved out of the area, and I hope he's got his life back on track. But I'm sure it's affected him forever for the rest of his life. That incident. Now the thing is. Even when all the evidence suggests that someone is guilty or not guilty, unless you were there, or unless you have video evidence, it's almost impossible to be 100% sure. Now, Russell Brand's life, like this friend of a friend, is in absolute turmoil right now. His YouTube channel has been demonetized. The BBC and other, and other streaming um, sources have taken uh, any video or any television program that he may have appeared in offline so that nobody can see him so he has effectively been deleted from history at this point the man has not gone to court he has not been convicted of any crimes and yet they are trying to destroy his life and i've seen this done once before i am not and never have i been a russell brand fan I must admit that in recent years, I think he's calmed down a lot. He seems a lot more sensible, a lot more grown up, and a lot more, a lot more like the sort of person who I can actually speak to and get along with. I think Russell Brand seems like a very nice, likable chap. Maybe a bit over the top at times, but I have friends who are like that anyway, so no big deal. The thing with this dispatcher's video is that it, it, in order for all of the things that have happened to Russell Brand to make sense at this point... It needs to be definitive. So what I'm looking for here are times, dates, video evidence, actual proof. Certainly no hearsay. Certainly no mixed messages. This needs to be definitive. And if it isn't, I'm going to call it out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Time out. Comedian of the year. Russell Brown. I like it if you if you are a fella and you do know you do have who you know a dinkle etc. It is quite nice. Them blowjobs, what you get sometimes. Never suggest it if you know if the girl does it, they ain't suggested it. I like them blowjobs, right, where it goes in their neck a little bit. I would never suggest it. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest. I'm not suggested it. It's the other idea. 
So Russell Brand has always been openly <clears throat> honest about his drug taking, his alcohol consumption, his sexual appetite, the number of sexual partners he's had, and just his general, you know, behaviour. He's never really hidden it, and he's openly using his sexual um, experiences. He's like a real life comedian, so he's using his own sexual experiences as his as as his comedy content. So it's not like hidden behind closed doors. You know, people knew what he was like right from the very get go. I would imagine as soon as he became famous, anyone who was interested in Russell Brand knew exactly what he was all about. Jobs where it goes, oh, 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 that noise. Oh, oh. Nice. No, I wouldn't suggest it. Be wrong to suggest it. Oh, 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 oh. I phoned and I asked to speak to his agent directly, and somebody asked what it was regarding, and I was said, that's regarding Russell Brand being a sex offender. A sex offender. Okay. Let's Google this. Sex offender definition. A person who commits a crime, a crime involving a sexual act. Okay. That's what she's accusing him of. So we set a stall out nice and early. Sexual offender, a crime, an actual crime. For more than a year, Channel 4 dispatches, the Times and Sunday Times have been investigating Russell Brown's tre treatment of women for over a year. This needs to be definitive to justify what's happening to him right now. Bearing in mind he hasn't been charged, that I'm aware of. Accused, yes, not charged. And he certainly hasn't been convicted. So, innocent until proven guilty <clears throat> is the law. But what's happening right now is is definitely not in alignment with that. So... More than a year of investi investigating Russell Brand's treatment of women. This needs to be definitive. And when I say definitive, I am referring back to the young lady who accused the friend of a friend of raping her when the reality was entirely different. In fact, the complete bloody opposite almost. So just bear that in mind. The allegations include rape, sexual assault, and controlling an emotionally abusive behaviour. Right, so controlling an emotionally abusive behaviour, that's not illegal. And that's entirely um, subjective. Entirely subjective. There are so many uh, little in in incremental and inconsistent um, elements that make up these emotionally abusive behaviour accusations and controlling behaviour accusations. Bearing in mind, he's the Hollywood star with all the money. Most of the women that he's been with, I would imagine, are just, you know, quote-unquote normal women. Nothing special. So he has all the power. So he has all the control. To a degree. You know, if they're a, 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 an attractive woman, they have a an element of control over him. Which is probably why women throw themselves at people like Russell Brand, I guess, because her body, her face, her looks, her personality um, has a bit of power over someone who has lots of money and can do anything they want. That feels like power to them, probably. But anyway, rape is a very clear, def definitive accusation. Sexual assault, on the other hand, is... Sexual assault happens when someone touches another person in a sexual manner without their consent. Now, my concern here is when two people meet, two normal people meet, and especially when you're young and maybe you haven't had sex before, I don't know, um, maybe you're just a bit nervous as a man, right? So the woman is giving you clear indications that she's interested in you sexually, but you're nervous. So you don't enact on those signals straight away. You might wait until she's done it two times, three times, ten times, fifteen times, a hundred times. Depends how confident you are. Somebody like Russell Brand, with loads of money, loads of fame, loads of, you know, 
loads of sexual um, uh, partners before this woman, the transition from getting to know you to actually ending up in bed together is going to be a lot shorter than it is for normal people. And that's just normal. That is normal. That's not weird. So the problem is, if a woman gives a clear, you know, a certain look, a certain way of standing or, you know, a raising of the eyebrow, any sort of sexual encouragement like that can be misconstrued by both A, the normal person who's very shy and the powerful person like in Russell Brown's position. And they might go for a kiss on the lips or on the cheek or touch the hand or the arm or the leg. That is a sexual touch. But they haven't explicitly been told they can do it. Do you understand? So there is a lot of ambiguity there. There is no definitive proof or explanation when this happens or when it doesn't happen. And sometimes people genuinely misinterpret your actions or, you know, indications. Someone, you, you might think someone's interested in you and you go for a kiss and they go, whoa, 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 no, we're just friends. So they were being friendly rather than coming on to you. And that happens all the time for both men and women. So it's very, very dangerous territory to accuse someone of sexual assault, I think, unless you've got definitive proof. It goes on to say, or when someone makes another person take part in a sexual activity with them without that person's consent. So if they're drunk or asleep, um, then, you know, th this is the territory we're walking into now. And it includes unwanted kissing and sexual touching. But if you've been in a long-term relationship, there's every chance in the world that you have broken your partner up with a bit of kissing or sexual touching that was not explicitly given, you know, they didn't explicitly ask you to do it. You've just woken up in the middle of the night, you fancy a little bit, you try and wake up your partner, and it either leads to sex or you go back to sleep. That's just, I'm sure that's happened to thousands of you out there. It's not new, it's not different. So even, even that is not definitive enough. There are so many mitigating factors that you've got to take into account that things like sexual assault is, it, it's not definitive enough. Rape, on the other hand, that's, a, well, even rape is not definitive, as I explained right at the beginning of this video. In some cases, rape is not rape. So they really have to convince me here. He's grabbing at my, my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me, and he won't get off like holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. He grabbed me and got me on the bed. I was fully clothed and he was naked at this point and he held me down and he was just aggressively trying to, you know, fuck me. Okay, they both sound really, really bad, but in context, they may not be that bad. Some people like rough sex. Some people do like rough sex. Uh, and that means they're complicit. Rough sex does not mean one of you is not complicit. In fact, some people like being dominated, as we all know. So don't just jump to conclusions. A lot of these women probably aren't actually the women. They're actresses. So A, they're really selling the story. B, they've got a, a, a script to read, uh, a narrative to sell. So um, don't get too excited by this. But, you know, we're less than two minutes into the video and they're really pushing this hard right now. I was like, oh my God, he raped me. There you go. There's the accusation there within two minutes and 14 seconds. But this, it's, it's a well-known fact, okay? It's a manipulative technique in media. You put your most important, like your best bits, the things that you think are going to grab people's attention and make them watch for the longest period of time. You put that right at the beginning of your video and that's how you sell it. That's how you get people interested right at the beginning of the video. So this is this has no context. So don't be drawn in by it straight away. He um, forced his penis down my throat and I couldn't breathe. It was just choking me. I was crying and he said, oh, I only want to see your mascara run anyway. <laughs> 
Them, them blood drops where mascara runs a little bit. <laughs> that's not necessarily crying. Um, that's like a gag reflex. If your eyes water. Now you can interpret that as crying. But crying and having a gag reflex where your eyes water. They're two very different things. So be careful. Five women have agreed to share their stories in this film. Four of the five have asked to remain anonymous, so their voices or other identifying features have been changed to protect their anonymity. In some cases, actors have been used. Right. Potential point to bear in mind that four out of the five do not want to be known i've never ever spoken publicly about this before russell seems untouchable Two thousand and twelve, so eleven years ago. It's two thousand and twelve. Russell Brand, a British comedian from a small town in Essex, has conquered Hollywood. He's just starred alongside Tom Cruise in blockbuster Rock of Ages and is about to embark on a new venture as the host of his own late-night chat show, Brand X. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned this already. I'm not a Russell, Band, Russell Brand fan. Uh, I think he's improved as a person in recent years. I haven't seen either of these shows. I've never heard of Brand X, and I, I don't think I've ever seen the film that he was in either. So it's not like I'm in his corner fighting for him. I've just... The way he's been treated, you know, you are innocent until proven guilty. So this video here needs to convince me that he's guilty. So, you know, I am looking for evidence. Hello, thank you very much for clapping. Welcome to the show. It's called Brand X. I'm completely disgusted in the way you treated me. Sad that I trusted you. Very angry with you and myself. She's angry with herself. For getting sucked into your narcissistic world. So. Question is, did he suck her in? Or did she jump in willingly? Do you know what you put me through? My body through? This letter is for me to work through my stuff, not for you. I just needed you to hear me. So this is an actress, okay? Actress, not actor. Actress. The words spoken are her own. If it positions that as the individual, sorry, a lady uncrossed the legs and I saw up her skirt. And that shows how the human mind works. You can be just about to make a brilliant point about homelessness and the media's service of a corporate agenda, and then you'll see up a woman's skirt and think, well, none of that really matters. Um, why did they put that in? That's not relevant to this story whatsoever. It was on a TV show. It happens all the time. It's happened to me. It's happened to probably every man on the planet who isn't gay. Um maybe even to some gay men you know women do uncross their legs and you do get a glimpse of stuff i mean basic instinct that film was famous for that one incident you know this is this, this is not groundbreaking journalism right here that that clip is totally irrelevant um and they're just trying to take you along a little a little ride at the moment uh, that that should never have been in there he was having a show and it was his very first Plus, he was actually, you know, he was honest about it. He turned it into a joke. That is his comedy. It is sexual-related comedy. That's what he does. 
it's just him being him. It's, you know, honesty, really. That's why it's funny. First one in Hollywood. Well, funny to some people. Brand X. I was at the trial run. There was an after party. I'd never met Russell before, ever. And he literally made a beeline for me and said, I want to meet you. We were chatting backstage. He leaned in and kissed me. Right, OK. So he's gone to the show. She's gone to the after party show. Um, he's made a beeline for her. And I mean, there are massive gaps in this storyline, right? Massive gaps, because that must be over the period of at least two hours. Okay? So massive gaps in the story, and he leans in and he kisses her. Okay? Now, referring back to how do you go from being complete, you know, not knowing each other to ending up in bed, someone has to make the first move. It was very, very quick. Bran took Nadia's number at the party. And they stayed in contact. So they were talking. Uh, he felt that there was sexual chemistry. He gave her a kiss. He took her number. She gave him her number, which kind of corroborates his understanding or belief that there was a sexual attraction going on there. So nothing untoward so far. Right. I did go around to his place and we did have sex so they're having sex right they have to understand i mean i understand this straight away but i'm just going to clarify it just in case people are not aware they're not in a relationship they're not girlfriend and boyfriend they're just two young free single people having sex and nothing else they don't owe each other anything other than respect um and there's no commitment there that's the kind of relationships that we're talking about right now. He's like, do you want to use a condom or not use a condom? And I'm like, no, absolutely, we're using a condom. Okay, well, good on him for asking, I would say. He seems like quite the gentleman at this moment. In, well, not necessarily a gentleman, but at least he asked. And he did respect my wishes then. Right, so that's good. He does this thing where he glazes over. I don't know what's going on in his head, so it was kind of weird. He does this thing when he glazes over. Right, so this is 11 years ago. I have no idea if this is before or after his drug and uh, alcohol binging sessions. So, you know, drugs and alcohol do make you behave not like yourself. Um, so I don't know at this point whether or not it's before or after that. July 1st, 2012 was when my rape happened. July 1st, 2012, okay. Well, she remembered the date, that's quite important. Maybe she's told this story many times. Maybe it really affected her. I was out late and he happened to call me and say, I've had a really bad day, please come over. And I, at first I said, no, I'm not going, it's late. And he's like, please come, just come and cuddle with me. So then I gave in. So then she gave in. Right, OK. Um, so that's what I think Americans call a booty call, right? He's, they've had sex before. She understands they're not in a relationship. He's calling her over for sex. And she's agreed to go. And I'm like, OK. door was unlocked. I just walked into his place. He comes running out of the bedroom naked. He came at me with kisses and stuff, which was kind of fun. And then it wasn't that fun when I couldn't move or I knew what he wanted from me at that point. You knew what he wanted from you at that point. The man's literally called you up for sex. You've agreed to go. He comes running out of the bedroom naked, kissing you, which you're enjoying initially. And then you see now this is 
I, I, oh. this is already starting to be a bit murky water for me. You know, the sex, the, the sexual request has been made and accepted. You've turned up. You're enjoying the sex initially, right? And then halfway through the sex, or just after the sex has started, something's going to happen, and, and you decide you don't want to be a part of it anymore. Now, if he's high on drinking drugs and stuff, he's not necessarily going to be thinking straight. He's going to be focused on one thing. But don't forget that you were invited round for sex and you turned up and you were enjoying it to start with. It's, it's murky water right now. He pushed me up against the wall. That's happened a million times during sex. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I have a friend here and I, I want you to come into the bedroom. I'm like, no, that's not happening. We're not doing that. Right, okay, so he's either got another man or another woman in the bedroom, or maybe it's not a man or a woman, it's uh, some sort of sexual toy. Or maybe he's talking about his penis, I'm not entirely sure. And I tried to get away from him. I slipped away from the wall. I went to another wall that had a painting on it, a huge painting. My bag got actually stuck underneath that, and it's still on my arm. And at this point, he's grabbing at my, my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me, and he won't get off. And he has that glazed look in his eye again. I was very distraught, trying to get out of the house with him being so much taller than me, like holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. I couldn't move. Now, I grant you, that sounds very bad, and accusationally bad, but unless you have video evidence or you were there yourself, you cannot just take her word for it, that that's how it went down. You can't. And I know this for a fact because, you know, I've been a part of something like that before. I've seen it happen. I've seen women lie, bareface lie. Um, I'm not suggesting that she is, but I'm suggesting that if he says that's not how it happened, she says that's how it did, you've got no idea, no idea whether it did or didn't happen that way. And... You know, leading up to that, he asked her around for sex. She agreed. She was enjoying it to begin with. Uh, there's, there's no mention of this other person. You know, if she really didn't want to have sex, why didn't the other person come out and say, "Well, well, what, what the, f what the hell's going on here?" Do you see what I mean? It doesn't quite add up in my head. I'm not wholeheartedly convinced at this point in time. And he finally comes and gets off of me, and I push him away. He blocks the door. He's like, are you okay? Blocks the door, not locks the door, blocks the door, okay? I'm like, no, I'm not okay. Get away from me. And he's like, well, let's calm down. I ran out, and I jumped in my car. I was in a daze. She ran out, so he wasn't blocking her. Maybe he was just stood in the doorway because he didn't try and stop her from getting out of the house. It wasn't like he was forcing her to stay there. Mm. There's too many gaps in this story. I'm not convinced. I'm sorry. That was crazy and selfish. I hope you can forgive me. I know that you're a lovely person. Okay, so obviously whatever did happen, they had a bit of an altercation. So I, I don't, I wouldn't say that was rape. It doesn't sound like rape to me. Um, n n not in the true sense of the word. Uh, maybe something less than rape, arguably. But again, unless you were there and you saw it, 
yourself, you can't really know for sure exactly what happened. Um, but, you know, he immediately, at 3.29 in the morning, July 1st, 2012, at 3.29 in the morning, um, apologised. And left a kiss. Okay. Nadia replied later that morning. So at 10, nearly 11 o'clock in the morning, she sends him a message saying, you scared the shit out of me. You're right, I am a lovely person, and for you to take advantage of me like that is unexpectable. Unexpectable. Okay. Do you have a problem? You need help. It's dangerous that you think you can get your own way all the time. You know how scary you are when that glazed look comes over you? Okay, now this bit's definitely bad. When a girl says, when a girl say no, it means no. Do I have to go get myself tested? Last time you asked me condom or no condom. When I say condom, that doesn't mean it's optional. You don't have the best reputation. You don't have the best reputation, and yet you turn up at his house at three o'clock in the morning for a booty call and then wonder why there's sexual content coming in your general direction. I pry myself on being safe and trying to make the right decisions. I'm not being funny. You're driving around at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, turning up at celebrities' houses for sex. You're not making good decisions in your life, girl. You're making terrible decisions, and... Um, you're doing it, why are you doing it? You're obviously not going to be in a relationship with Russell Brand unless you wanted that and he didn't. So you're going there for sex. You're going there for the experience. You're not, you're not buddies. You're not boyfriend or girlfriend. You're going there for sex. Obviously this was a bad one. I'm so disappointed. Yeah, okay, so... Mm. There's a lot of holes in this story, I've got to be honest. That same day, Nadia went to a local rape treatment centre to report what had happened. OK. She underwent tests, was given antibiotics and emergency contraception. They took... That's a wise decision, so she's not completely stupid. ...my underwear and obviously the samples. Nadia gave staff this detailed account. Wait a minute, what did she say there? They took her underwear. ...treatment centre to report what had happened. She underwent tests, was given antibiotics and emergency contraception. They took my underwear and obviously the samples. They took her underwear, okay. So all of this has been redacted. All of that has been redacted. So she referred herself that same day, okay? So this is over the telephone. According to victim, he then pushed her up against the wall, separated her legs with his leg, moved her underwear to the side and vaginally penetrated her, ejaculating inside her once he was finished. Nadia gave staff this detailed account of the incident. Damn it. She reported that the situation for her was even more complicated due to the assailant's celebrity status. She decided not to go to the police. Why did she decide that? I was just too scared. I didn't want to put my family through that, let alone me through that, with him being famous. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I see a lot of women seem to do that. A lot of women seem to say that. When I went in for one of my first therapy sessions, I literally couldn't yeah, say therapy? the word rape. 
I... If you literally couldn't say the word rape, maybe it's because you didn't feel like it was actually rape. I had to keep saying sexually assaulted. I would say sexually assaulted is more accurate than rape, from what she's described. Uh, based on instinct and nothing more, there's not enough evidence there, I think, to convict him of rape. Maybe a sexual assault, but then you foot, you know, then you're in the he said, she said realm, and you can never prove anything in in that situation is the problem. But by the end of it, I was like, oh my god, he raped me. So by the end of it, did you realise that he raped you, or were you coerced into having that opinion? Was it said to you multiple times over until you got to the point where you went, oh my God, yeah, you're right, he did. So you didn't initially think he did. Do you see what I mean? There's gaps in this woman's story, lots of. And why are they doing all this? Showing her, holding her hands and feeling, you know, like emotionally distraught. And, and This is an actor. This isn't the real woman. This is irrelevant. This is that, that's pulling playing on your heartstrings. It's not real. This was in 2012, but other allegations against Russell Brand go back many years. Hey, what a year it's been for you, Mr. Russell Brand. But ever such a nice time. Do three. Three. Please. I sent my resume to one of those agencies that like will place you places, and I was given this interview to work with Russell. The only thing I knew about Russell is that I had watched the NME Awards a week or two before I got this interview. And at the NME Awards, Bob Geldof called him the C word. <laughs> Russell Brand, what a I've never seen that footage before. Um, wow. Russell, I was like, oh. They don't like each other. Oh, this is like weird and refreshing. And it really did seem like he was on his way up. Camden at that time. You know, it was like Amy Winehouse stumbling out of like the Holly Arms. All these like bands that I read in the NME, like hanging out. I'm like going places with Russell. You know, somebody whispering in my ear, oh, do you know who that is? It was an exciting time. I've got to be on the telly, shut up! Russell's been a national comedy tour. He was writing a book. He was writing a weekly column in The Guardian. He had two shows, Big Brothers Big Mouth, one Leicester Square on MTV. On the telly, you look, you look quite cool, but in real life, you look sort of preposterous. Right, I think so. <laughs> This is like the world I lived in. He always only wore his underwear, his tidy whities I don't think today I would accept like a boss only being in his underwear around me. His favorite subject was him. He was a narcissist and it was like almost a joke. I was trying to get his attention because we had had to go somewhere and I couldn't get him to listen to me. And I literally looked in my bag, found the, the schedule and I said, Russell, and I showed him the picture of his face. And he looked at me and he smiled and he's like, oh, you, you get me. I mean, it was just like nonstop and not to mention a very active sex addiction. Right, so I used to be able to distract myself from feeling embarrassed and ashamed by um, drinking and taking drugs, cheer me up a little bit. Can't do that anymore because I've spoiled it, took too much of it. <laughs> so now, because I can't do that anymore, I like to have it off, right? <laughs> As sort of, thanks, yeah. Yeah, that's cheesy idea of sex. Okay, so this is not groundbreaking stuff. He's, he's always been open about this kind of thing. This is not new. And nothing that that woman, his PA, said shocks me in any way, shape or form. Lots of very successful people are self-centered motherfuckers. They really are. 
that's why they're so successful because they love themselves so much that it's easy for other people to look at them and go oh yeah you are so great aren't you people like me are not so easily impressed but you know lots of people are brand was a self-proclaimed sex addict and his promiscuity was celebrated in the tabloid press you were voted the sun newspapers shagger of the year it was a proud day <laughs> He went on to win Shagger of the Year three years in a row. I'm assuming, though, that the, you, 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 have, uh, you take precautions. Um, yeah, I take an awful lot of precautions. What I do is I make absolutely sure that it is a woman, mm. then go for it. That's a very young man joke about sex, that is. That's not a serious answer. There's a lot of unnecessary BS in here so far. I, I, I'm not convinced at this point, let's put he it that well way. well known for his controversial sexual humour. I'm really crap at this, aren't I? You're lovely, you're fine. Just go with it. Don't try and fight it. <laughs> I have to say that every day. <laughs> there was no shortage of bookings. Are oh, you in a bra designed by you now? Um, no, but I'm wearing my knickers. Get him off. <laughs> Okay. There won't be a point where I go, oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a point where I go, go on in. Oh! Sexual humour, you know. Young, brash, not to it. You know, he's British, you know. No sex, please, we're British. It's a very British thing. He is like the uh, antithesis of, of that. And that's why people find him funny and embrace him. You know, uh, deep down, some people are probably thinking... I wish I was that confident and I could just in front. Uh, what's this lady's name? I've forgotten her name. Absolute stunner back in the 90s. I don't know what she looks like now. Don't really care, to be honest. But back in the 90s, is it Caprice? It may be Caprice. You know, she was some hot stuff back then when I was a young, young man. Um, you know, and to be that sexually confident with that woman in the room next to you, you know, a lot of men would have aspired to be that way. A lot of young men, especially. <laughs> Come on! Everyone does it. Now, did you see that? <laughs> Touches her on the knee. Sexual assault happens when someone touches another person in a sexual manner without their consent. Has she given explicit, explicit consent? No, she has not. Do you think she thinks that was a sexual assault? Probably not. Probably not. And I don't think anyone would convict him of it either. Come on. <laughs> Everyone does it. Don't be afraid of your own sexuality. Do be a bit afraid of mine, though. <laughs> He could not stop sleeping with women, and he was never satisfied by it. He was never happy. He's not happy because it's just sex. There's no intimacy. There's no relationship. There's no loving sharing of emotions there. That's all that is. We were a shallow at existence. The TV show One Lester Square. He was like walking this way, and he like said, "Can you get me their numbers?" They were members of the audience. Members of the audience. She says that like it's the most unbelievable thing in the world. You know, Hollywood superstars and successful television personalities have been sleeping with audience members for years. And audience members, a lot of them are known as groupies who hang around on the off chance that they might get to have sex with that person. It's been like that for a long time. On his show. I saw a lot of, like, things that, that if I were to walk into it now, I would say, oh, that's, that's not right. But, like, back then, everything was so normalised. At this time, Brad... I think that's another fair point. 
you know, back then, you, you, you can't judge people in the past by today's standards. That's been said so many times, and it's so true. And back then in the 90s, you know, we'd just come out of the 60s. The 60s led to this. The 60s was a sexual revolution. The 70s was like a continuation of that. The 80s, things sort of calmed down. And then in the 90s, it was kind of like, it was all about boy bands and, you know, rock bands behaving badly like Oasis and stuff. Sex, drugs and rock and roll. It all came back to a, to a head in the 90s. It, it does this all the time. Every decade is different. That's why we say the 80s and the 90s, because the six, you can't compare the way people behaved in the 60s in the 90s, because you look back and you think, my God, how do they behave that way? And in the same way, you can't expect 2023, look back in the 90s and say, oh, well, that was a bit, you know, sexually free and explicit, wasn't it? You know, it was a different time. We were exploring you know new avenues sexual encounters and so on and work closely with a small trusted team including his long-term writing partner matt morgan there was this one day in particular in edinburgh festival and he was headlining and we were sitting in a bar with his writing partner and some other people a producer was with us he's like show us show us some of those pictures russell pulled out his phone and he started showing pictures of women and they all were just sort of like giggling at the photos and like these are women who are sending him pictures of their boobs, of you know, naked. And at a certain point I was like, okay, well, let me see what we're looking at. And I, and I leaned in. As he's going through these pictures, he gets to a picture of somebody I knew. It did something to me. It made me feel really sick to my stomach. She's sick to her stomach, she's saying now at him he didn't send that picture to himself she sent that picture to him right or he took that picture of her whilst they were having sex possibly but her friend instigated that situation not him these are women who aren't expecting to be shown to like the dude's friends you know well if they're not then they're bloody stupid i guess um you know once again these are these are not boyfriend and girlfriend relationships this is just sex if you're sending pictures of your anatomy to someone there's a chance they're going to share it to somebody else by accident or on purpose and if you're and that's with normal people if you're in the hollywood realm you know the superstar super rich realm the, the rules that the rest of us are bound by don't apply to these people at all. We've seen it so many times. Oh. Look at the Clintons, for goodness sakes. He was getting blowjobs left, right and centre. Denied it to, um, in court, under, under, um, under oath, denied that it ever happened. He got away with it. The rules do not apply evenly across all classes the more money you have the more power you have and that's wrong but that's the way it is i felt terrible for all these people these women i felt shame in that moment why do you feel shame i'm not being funny she's not the most attractive woman in the world it's probably why russell brand had him had her as his pa because he probably stipulated, I don't want anyone too attractive because I'm going to end up trying to sleep with them. Now, <coughs> just because she's not <coughs> sexually promiscuous in the same way that he is, what the hell, what's that got to do with her? People's sex lives are private to them. And as long as they're not breaking the law, it doesn't matter how many sexual partners you've had, really. I mean, I'm not going to delve into how many sexual partners I've had, but I can assure you it's probably more than most people. That's just the way it is. But I guarantee you, unequivocally guarantee you, I've had less sexual partners than Russell Brand. But probably more than her. Mm. 
Do you ever worry that there was a lack of consent from any of the women that he might have been sleeping with? I never worried. I saw a lot of women knowing who he was. She had whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see the crazy editing there? These women, I felt shame in that moment. Watch the editing here. This is really important and relevant. <clears throat> so far, with the exception of the rape claim at the beginning, which has lots of holes in it, this is 16 minutes of not convincing me of anything and showing me loads of stuff that's totally irrelevant. Do you ever worry that there was a lack of consent from any of the women that he might have been sleeping with? I never worried. He never worried, right? Instant cut. Instant cut of the camera. Edit. So this is not consistent. This has been put in afterwards. I saw a lot of women knowing who he was. He saw a lot of women knowing who he was. This is no longer a single take. This has been edited. Of the year, ...who willingly were walking into his bedroom. I never once thought that he was somebody that would rape anybody, assault anybody. I, no, I didn't. I didn't think so. As far as I knew, I mean, what can I possibly know that when I wasn't there, but what I saw. So from what she saw, she never, ever worried that he was a, a rapist or anything like that, despite the many, many edits that they've made in that interview. I thought I was very grown up, thought I was very mature, and like I, I knew everything about the world. The law enabled it as well. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be legal for a 16 year old to have a relationship with a man in their 30s. Why? 16 is the legal age. Socially, that's unacceptable isn't it socially that's unacceptable legally there's no law being broken there but socially there's, you definitely frown upon it i never felt there was any kind of legally he wouldn't have been old enough to be her dad so he just falls under that bracket there i guess uh power balance at all who always felt like he had the upper hand well he's the multi-millionaire super famous person and you're just a girl trying to get a shag i guess that's why he has the power in bed i just followed his lead that's because you're 16 and unless you've been sexually active since before turning 16 years old you don't know what you're doing exciting what's going on Ashleen is gone next door no. by April 2006 Russell Brand was in great demand. Right, um, I think you can see up that lady's skirt. That I just I spotted that completely by by accident. But um, Big Brother and this guy here are kind of like the perfect match because when Big Brother came out, it was cameras in a house where nobody can hide and everybody can see everything, which brings up sexual, you know, opportunities, doesn't it? If two people, everybody wanted to see if people were going to have sex in the Big Brother house. That's kind of what it was all about at the beginning. After a while, that became less of a thing because obviously they toned it down because they didn't want too much sexual exploitation. But there were sexual incidents in all of the Big Brothers. They all had something go on at some point. And him being a sexual comedian, sexual-based comedian, it's a match made in heaven. 
you know, this lady, I don't know if that's her underwear or a pair of shorts or whatever, but, you know, this is, this is, this was the 90s. It was all very much, you ever see Euro trash? That was all tits and arse and that's what the 90s were like. Away from the limelight, at the age of 30, he was starting a relationship with 16-year-old Alice. No. I don't necessarily believe it was a relationship. Maybe she thought it was a relationship because she was 16 and naive, but I don't think Russell Brand, at that time at least, was even slightly interested in having any kind of quote-unquote relationship. I had a friend that worked in the Leicester Square building that housed MTV. I was coming out of that studio and Russell was coming in. He saw me and he'd asked what my business was there. I'd just been to Topshop. He took the shopping bags from my hands and picked a dress out and he said, OK, you're going to wear that on a date with me. Sexually confident. Um, there are a lot of 16-year-old girls who look a lot older than their age. Um, that's just a fact. He, at that point, probably didn't even know she was 16. I remember wearing, you know, a red wiggle dress and big platform shoes and had my hair blown out and was wearing makeup, but I didn't look like a woman by any means. I was a child that had got dressed up for dinner. In many ways, that's really quite sad. You know, I do feel for this, this young lady, but nothing illegal has happened here. It was overwhelming, but I did feel, yeah, I liked, I liked him and I felt a bit giddy. I felt special. I woke up to text messages from him saying that he dreamt that we were married and how happy it had made him. Looking back on the relationship, which started consensually, Alice now feels she was controlled by Brand. He would later joke on stage about his techniques with women. I can pretend to be nice for a little bit of time, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, pretending to be nice. I'm quite nice. I nod a lot. I'm quite nice. Yeah, come round my house. Yeah, we'll just watch a video. No, it's all right. I'll sleep on the sofa. Right, pretending to be nice. Yeah, no, it's all right. We'll just cuddle. No, we'll just kiss a bit. That's all right. No, I'm not even that interested in sex. Where's it come? I'll just kiss. Yeah, let's watch Wonderful Life on the video. The Nobstacle Course, I call that. <laughs> That's quite funny, the Nobstacle Course. Um, I'm not being funny. He's not the only man on the planet who does that. Lots and lots and lots of men do that. He's not trying to get in a relationship with these women. He's trying to have sex with these women. And that's his way of, you know, you have to go from not knowing somebody to ending up in bed together. And this is his tried and tested method. I mean, there's nothing illicit or illegal about that. As a woman, you might hear it and think, oh my God, that's just so awful. But men, trust me, even married men, I don't do it myself. My wife will tell you, I'm, I'm as honest as the day is long. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Because I tell the truth all the time. All the time. But have you heard the statement, happy wife, happy life? Men lie to their wives all the time. Or don't tell the truth all the time just to keep the peace this is not obscure or abnormal this is just one example of a man i met up with him we walked through the door and then again things got very intense very very quickly he was like, so how many people have you had sex with? And I said, no one. Like, I've never had sex with anyone. And he got an erection straight away. And he was like, oh my God, he's like my baby, my baby, and picked me up and cradled me in his arms like a child and was stroking my hair. He yeah, he's, 
He's not a paedophile. That's what that make. What she said then makes him sound like a paedophile. That's not paedophilia. That's just drunken. You know, he may not have been drunk. It's just stupid, dumb. When a man gets an erection, all the blood goes out of his brain and into his penis. That's drunken sex man talk. You know, just. I mean, it's still weird, socially unacceptable, 30-year-old man, 16-year-old girl. You know, if I was her dad, I'd be I'd be fucking annoyed. Really annoyed. But, you know, it's not illegal. He's like, you're like my little dolly. I Russell. He's exploring his sexuality within the limits of the law. Now, within the limits of the law, that's 16 to any age at all. So, you know, it's just part of who he is and part of what he was doing, I think. Still engaged in the behaviours of a groomer. Looking back in there, I didn't even know what that was there. He's not a groomer. He's a sexually active man who's looking for multiple sexual partners and no relationships it's it's that simple they're not what that looked like he would try to drive a wedge between me and my parents taught me to lie to them mm. taught her to lie to her parents Some alarm bells going off there. Teenagers are horrible things. Some better than others, some worse than others. But lying to your parents? Pretty sure every teenager has done that at least once. He didn't teach her how to lie to her parents. That's bullshit. I was at my dad's house and it was 11 o'clock at night. Russell was texting me, he's like, please come over, I need to see you, I'm really upset, like, I need to see you. And I said, I can't, it's, it's late. He came up with a scenario where my friend was ill, and he made me do these role-play conversations with him. He was like, okay, I'm going to be your dad, and you be you, and he would correct me as we went along. He's like, no, you can't say that, your dad's going to say this. He had a whole script for me. Yeah, he didn't have a script for you. He's making it up as he goes along. He's using his um, his ability to figure out what your dad would say to anything you say in order to try and make it possible for you to get out of the house. They're definitely trying to make this be something it isn't right now. Alice recalls how Brand made her feel after she'd had sex with him for the first time. When everything was over, one of his friends came round to the house. They both drove me to the tube station. I felt like a little kid being dropped off somewhere. He reached his hand behind the car seat and was holding my hand behind the seat like my mum does when she's in the car. And it made me feel like, yeah, a little, I felt very small. I felt like a little kid. Uh, newsflash, you were a little kid and you've just done something very stupid. Very stupid. So you do feel like a little kid. That, I think that's quite a normal reaction. Uh, if he really was your first time, which, um, again, I don't know for sure, I uh, only have your word for it. Um, I find it highly unlikely, though. Um yeah, and why would your dad let you out of the house at 11 o'clock at night? I mean, what kind of a parent is that? What kind of a parent is that? Um, yeah, no, I'm sorry. You're feeling guilty about what you've done, and that's why you felt like a little kid. Can I go with? Yeah, of course you can, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Don't know why that's the bit that... I tell you why that's the bit that upsets you the most because that's the moment you realise you've done something really stupid and you couldn't undo it that's why that upsets you the most
I didn't feel like I could advocate for myself in any way. And I also didn't feel like I could argue with a grown up. Because you're a child. I'd only been seeing him a couple of months. I remember he, he ran a bath for me and he made me sit in the bath. Then he said he had to leave, but I should stay in the bath for the entirety of him being gone. It was long enough for me to get cold. I got out of the bath and put a towel on. It was like, okay, I'll just, when I hear the door go or the phone go, I'll just jump back in. He was very pleased and elated when he came home and I was still in the bath. Then picked me up and dried me off and then wrapped me up in a robe and like, put me on the sofa. Um. Yeah. I, I, I think there's something not right about that. It, he may well have said to her, you know, stay in the bath. I've got to go do something. You have a bath. It's all cool. I'll be back in a bit. And she maybe misinterpreted that. I just, I think the whole thing is weird. And he was probably surprised and shocked to find her still in the bath when he came back. Things took a slightly darker turn. I was sat up in the bed up against the headboard and he um, forced his penis down my throat and I couldn't breathe, it was just choking me and I couldn't breathe. I was pushing him away, pushing him away and he wasn't, he wasn't backing off at all. And so I ended up having to punch him really hard in the stomach to get him off. And then he like, finally then he like moved fell backwards and i was crying and he said oh i only want to see your mascara run anyway mm. there's too many gaps in that story for my liking um that sounds like a story told through a 16 year old's brain where all the things she did that were wrong that encouraged that or whatever are just left out of the story and only the bits that she thinks are relevant to back up a story are included that that again is is not illegal um if they were in a relationship you know not boyfriend and girlfriend but a sexual relationship then you know sometimes here's, here's a news flash for you sex goes wrong sometimes guys and girls um, yeah. <laughs> I still think, uh, you know, he was too old to be with a 16-year-old girl, but then, you know, she, if she was 18, that's only two years different, but it changes everything, doesn't it? You suddenly feel like, well, if she was 18 and 30, that's not so bad. You see what I mean? There's only two years difference there. I don't agree with what he was doing, but... It's not illegal. Them, them blowjobs were Certainly shouldn't have all of his um, money taken away and his job taken away and his life ruined. So he has to move away to a different country, should he? For doing nothing illegal. Uh, mascara runs a little bit. <laughs> Good. We're too much saliva. He's cut uh, uh, a lot of spit. Uh, uh, uh. But I wouldn't suggest it. That would be horrible. If I suggested it, now that, that's improper. And then I knew at that point that, like, he didn't care about hurting me physically or emotionally or any of it. He just was, it took me, I was like, I know that it shouldn't take you having to punch someone and to win them. To get them off you, it shouldn't be a physical fight. That wasn't a physical fight. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm not sold on that story at all. You were young After and naive. That, I just said that I wanted to... Get that doesn't excuse him doing that, but it's not illegal. Go to sleep, so I just like laid on one side of the bed, and then that was when he got on top of me and held like my mouth open, and was just like drooling into my mouth, and I was gagging and like 
try, cause like trying to fight him off me, but he's laying on top of me, so I can't, like my limbs are trapped underneath him. It is my humble view that there ain't a single sexual act from the humble wank right up to the sexual apotheoses that is bumming <laughs> that ain't enhanced by spitting. <laughs> There's literally no joke there. That is just a sex tip. Uh, so that explains why he did the spitting thing with Caprice earlier. Uh, that's not something I agree with, um, but then I've never really tried that. It sounds pretty disgusting to me, but, you know, each to their own. And then he held my mouth shut and made me swallow it. And so I was just, like, gagging and crying. Okay. That's not illegal. It's disgusting, but it's not illegal. I remember just at that point feeling like everything was very dark. I didn't know why he even wanted me there because it didn't seem like even doing that stuff didn't seem like it was making him happy. He just seemed angry the whole time and he seemed angry with me. And I didn't know what I'd done. I think he was very skillful in the start from making his identity be, I'm the womanizer, I'm a sex addict, I'm inappropriate, but it's all just a joke, it's funny. I don't think it was clever at all. I think it's just being honest, it's just being himself. There's nothing clever about that. It's, you know, it's a smoke screen for it really isn't a smoke screen. It's a window. More of his dark behaviour. He can keep pushing and being more and more extreme. And nobody questions it because it just is, well, that's who he is. That's what he does. That is who he is. And that is what he does. That's just Russell. See, I've never had sex with Russell Brand. But I knew all of this about him, except for the spitting thing, before I watched any of this show. There's nothing insightful here at all. Russell okay. Brand's journey to fame was chaotic. Condoms, do you have condoms here? Women, I want a woman, I want to put my hand in a pussy. In the early 2000s, he was gaining notoriety for his risque on screen antics. Yeah. Oh no! You're sick, mate. You're sick! Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Here, give us a little cuddle. <laughs> give us a little cuddle. Borrow us your jeans! But his addiction to drugs and alcohol was becoming a problem for those working with Brand. It cost him his show on MTV, and he was sacked from comedian Steve Coogan's feature film, Cruise of the Gods. Because I've caused all troubles fighting in a lap dancing club. I got into a mad Sorry. argument with a prostitute in a brothel in Istanbul. <laughs> None of the others. What was I? You weren't there yet. I know, otherwise I'd have been under your wing. I'd have been safer. Despite Brand's career hanging in the balance, in 2002, he was signed by celebrity agent John Knoll who sent him for a three-month stint in rehab. Noel discussed this in a 2015 documentary about Brand's life and career. If he carries on the way he's going, he'll be dead in six months. So we pulled his work and put him on the train, and that was the start of Russell in rehab. Lots of people were like that. Um, I had a similar instant in my own life where not drink but drugs very nearly killed me a couple of times over um again it doesn't define your personality it's just something that some people have in their life and you i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy um you know the horrible thing to go through and difficult to get past but you can do it and 
Russell Brand has done it, and I have done it, and many, many other people have done it, so, you know, commend them for that, at least. Brand emerged in early 2003, clean and ready to work, and Noel started putting him up for jobs. I'm Russell! Paving the way for his entry into mainstream television. We've got new rules. We've got a new house, 12 new housemates who are going to be taking up residence. Big Brother was a television phenomenon. Millions tuned in every night. It was made by Endemol Productions and commissioned by Channel 4. When the show was in its fifth series... There you go. Naked dude. Actually, I actually watched this one. But there you go. That's what it was all about. It was all about sex and alcohol and that's what it was Channel 4 that's the 90s big brothers e forum a live show about the daily activity in the big brother house brand was hired as its host wow cheers welcome to big brothers e forum i'm russell brand and at the big brother was a huge money maker for endemol and the broadcaster with series 5 generating 45 million pounds in advertising revenue alone Brand was now the spin-off show star. But within a few weeks of starting on set, he focused his attention on a junior member of the team. This is a picture of Russell that I took in his dressing room. The cue cards that I've kept, Big Brother's e forum. This is a photo of the set. That would be us sitting in for rehearsal. I am a piece of wood. I will remind you of Russell. That's the kind of thing that he used to pass to me when we were rehearsing. Sexual joke. It was only one of my first jobs. I was a runner. There was a, a real sense for me of being the baby and wanting to make an impression on everybody. If it was a show day, either myself or the other runner was assigned to Russell, getting him into makeup, getting him on set for the show. He had a way of. It's really hard to describe. He, he had a way of making me feel like I was special. It was nice to you, basically. Rachel says more senior members of the production team working for Endemol would take advantage of her friendship with Brand. Russell used to have days where, you know, he was more approachable than other days. And I think there was definitely an element of not wanting to rock the boat with him too much because of his association with drugs beforehand and the fact that he wasn't that long out of rehab and that he could be quite vulnerable. Okay. If the producers or the series producer or director or anyone wanted to get a message to Russell and it perhaps wasn't going to be taken that favorably, they would get me to go in and tell him because they knew that I would soften the blow because they knew that he liked me, that we had uh, a relationship. A rapport, not a relationship. Um, yeah, you know, that is that is normal. Some Somebody who's on television like that is either completely relaxed and totally themselves, which um, can make them cope with, you know, being famous, etc., really, really well. However... What you see on the screen and what you see when they're off screen are not necessarily always the same thing. So they have to put on an act and they have to perform in front of people. Now, people who have to do that a lot often have highs and lows. This is nothing new again. This is quite normal stuff. A friendship. So it, de it definitely felt like yeah. I became a bit of a pawn it's really difficult to recall the exact moment that 
the line was crossed from friendship into something more. One of the memories that is very vivid to me and will forever stick in my mind. I think I must have gone to see what he wanted for lunch and he saw that it was me and he turned around towards me. I wasn't incredibly close to him, but I saw that he had his penis out of his shorts or trousers and it was in his hands and he insinuated that I might like to suck his dick. Yep. I obviously didn't go and suck his dick, but I also was scared to rock the boat. I was... Now, there, there is most definitely a employer, employee, extra layer of difficulty. But as she has quite rightly said, they had a friendship slash relationship for a long time prior to this incident. And then there was a transition. Now, you know, some people have met that way and been married for 50, 60 years very happily. Um, it's... It's a difficult one, but it's not really exploitative because, you know, it has happened over a period of time. It's almost natural. Someone has to take the first step and we know what he's like. Incredibly shocked. I felt very anxious. I was scared of what the repercussions would be if somebody had found out. Obviously, he was the presenter and I was a runner. I wasn't going to tell anyone what he'd done because I didn't want to lose my job. So now, for the first time in this entire thing, I actually 100% believe what she's saying and 100% feel sorry for her because she is in a lose-lose position. Um, so, you know, it's not illegal, Bill, but this is the first time in this video where... I 100% believe what she's saying. She seems credible, 100% credible to me. As time went on and his flirtations grew stronger with me, I was flattered. I'd been sucked into his world, I suppose. No. I still don't believe that. This is just you blaming him you allowing yourself to be sucked into his world he's trying to entice you in and you're being enticed in that's not his fault he's saying here's my penis would you like to suck it and you say no and then a week later you're like well, maybe and then a week after that you're like okay you've allowed yourself to do that he was a very intoxicating i mean if you don't want to have sex with a man you say look I am not interested, ever, but thanks anyway. Now, I can understand why she might feel that's difficult, because she might lose her job or whatever, but have some respect for yourself, for God's sake. Person. Rachel says she met up with Brand outside work, and they had sex for the first time. He made it clear to me that it, I couldn't tell anyone else on the crew. It had to be a complete secret, because... He had it written into his contract that he wasn't allowed to have any sexual contact with anyone working. Okay. I still think she's 100% credible. He has broken a clause in his contract. But because Big Brother was so popular, I bet you even if they did know, and I suspect they probably did know, because they were already using her to pass messages on to him to make it easier, etc., um, they wouldn't have sacked him anyway, but um, yeah, you know, she's in a position, not necessarily from Russell Brand's doing, but from the way that the established media, the media established media enterprise works the world over, which is why it should be torn down and started again. I think. Looking on Big Brother. A newspaper later reported that one of the conditions of Brand's hire on Big Brother was that he wouldn't sleep with anyone on the programme. Brand himself wrote in his autobiography... Technically, he didn't sleep with anyone on the programme. He slept with somebody in the staff. 
So maybe he didn't break his contract there. It'll be interesting to see what Russell Brand says about that. That before he was offered the Big Brother job, his agent, John Knoll, had to sign a contract guaranteeing he would be no trouble. I didn't know that he had this history of sex addiction, but they obviously did, and it was enough of a concern for them to... I don't think the sex addiction is the problem. I think the drink and drugs were the problem. Write it into his contract. It sounds slightly dramatic, but with hindsight and now as an older woman, I can say with clarity that, you know, I felt like I was groomed um, for sex. Wow. That is somebody looking back on period in their life that they now regret and want to blame somebody else for. It wasn't groomed. That's not grooming. That's not, that is not grooming. It really isn't. There is a responsibility of production companies. They enabled him to exist. I agree. The production company certainly have something to answer for this. In these. Channel 4, no less, the same company who run dispatches. So let's have them on trial, shall we? Shall we take away Channel 4's ability to earn money, shall we? That seems fair in contrast, don't you think? Environments where he was able to take advantage of his, who he was. Right, let's just ask this question, right? If she'd have met Russell Brand and he wasn't famous and he didn't have any money, would she be interested in having sex with him? No. So there's something about, probably not anyway, there's something about money and being famous that makes men any man more attractive to women and we know this the world over there was that do you remember that 80 90 year old billionaire who was married to i can't remember her name massive big boobs big blonde hair massive big lips she was not with him because he was a sexy man she was with him because he was a multi multi billionaire you see my point Right, so that's two of the five that we've heard from and three other crew members on Big Brother agreed to share their stories, but they don't want to be shown. Okay. So it seems, sounds like it all happened during the Big Brother era. Just after he'd given up drinking drugs. Just Big after. Big Brother was, it was like a world in just after he'd given up drinking drugs. Now, refer back to his um, stand-up comedy sketch where he said, and I quote, uh, he used to use drinking drugs to disguise his embarrassment and lack of confidence or whatever. Now he just likes to screw. So we're literally talking about that transition from taking drugs and drink out of his life and then looking to have more sex to fill that void. So... kind of makes sense doesn't it in itself and getting into that world felt like an incredible achievement and i felt very lucky right the housemates have only been locked up for four days and yet already i start to think of fizzy pop as some sort of precious magical elixir my role was to recruit audience members for the live show we used to go out flyering out by the universities find university students who would come down and um, be on the show. 
anarchy in the Big Brother house. First of all, right, they cut short their medieval tasks. That's not proper or right, is it? Russell was pointing out women that he found attractive in the audience and then getting the runners to get their details so that they could meet up after the show. He would give a runner a piece of paper and it would be a phone number or where to find him in his hotel room. They would give that out to at least two, three girls in the audience. And I say girls because they were like all over 18, but they were all under 22. Right. Russell Brand doesn't appear to be that old at this point in time. I don't know how old he was, but, you know, these are these are adult women, okay, uh, who can make up their own mind and make their own decisions, right? Oh, hello. Oh. I distinctly remember getting phone calls from women in tears the next day saying that they'd met up with Russell. They were mainly upset because they just felt used, you know. They're not in a goddamn relationship. Don't meet up with somebody you don't know, have sex with them, and then feel guilty about it and blame them. What the hell are you doing, women? Have more respect for yourself. He promised he'd call me. He said he'd speak to me again, and I've not heard from him. That said, you know, I don't know what went on once they left the studio. It felt like we were essentially taking lambs into slaughter. We are basically acting like pimps to Russell Brand's needs. Yeah, that basically is what you're doing, except that nobody's getting paid and these women are going willingly and there is nothing illegal going on it here. It was really horrible to listen to those women being so distressed and upset. Just didn't feel right. Oh, hang on. Now they're women. Are they women or are they girls? Make your mind up, please. They're women, aren't they? Young women. This runner was also working with Brand on another Channel 4 show made by Endemol, called Kings of Comedy. Part of my job as a runner was to go and, and collect Russell from his hotel and bring him to the studios. Russell would answer, you know, just in underwear usually, although obviously knew the call time, knew he should be dressed and ready. He'd try and invite me in. Would always jokingly say, surely we've got time for a quickie. I had my radio and I think I always made sure there was a way of contacting the studio. So I did think, oh gosh, hang on, I don't really want to be on my own here. It doesn't seem like a great situation to have been put in. I think that our production manager had talked about being alone and I think that was one of the reasons I had walkie talkie. On the next series of Big Brother's E Forum in 2005, crews say they told more senior members of the production team at Endemol that they had concerns about Brand's behaviour. I kind of felt something wasn't right. I didn't like it. I discussed it with one of the other research team and we sat across from... There was like a talent booking manager she was pretty old school, had like a Rolodex of contacts. And she was just like, girls, girls, you know, it's what happens with the talent. That's what I've been saying the whole video. It's true. And it's not just Russell Brand. It really isn't. Um, he was just more sexually confident and, you know, exploring and enjoying his sexuality more than most, let's say. But it certainly isn't unheard of. Boys will be boys. Another crew member says she raised a separate complaint alongside a colleague. We reported what had happened and what we... And again, you know, these complaints raised with Channel 4 or whatever the name of the company is, they should be held responsible for not actually dealing with those complaints properly. Um, and they won't be. And Channel 4 are the same company that are making this programme. It all seems a bit two-faced to me. We'd seen them and said that, that these calls had come in. We didn't hear anything more about it. I don't know whether that complaint went any higher than our production management team. It was definitely met with, OK, well, that's not OK. I don't know if anybody spoke to Russell. The behaviour didn't stop. The crew members say they don't okay. know if the complaints went to the top of Endemol 
all were passed on to Channel 4. Right, so Endemol and Channel 4 should be held accountable for their part in this so far. As far as I'm concerned, at this point in time, we're halfway through the video, Channel 4 and Endemol are the ones that should be held accountable for their actions. Russell Brand, in my mind so far, hasn't done anything illegal, nothing to justify having his entire um, YouTube channel and everything that he does taken away. Um, but, you know, there's still half a video to go, so let's see. This is Lorraine Hegacy, Senior Television Executive and BBC One Controller between 2000 and 2005, okay? Everybody should be able to report their concerns and everybody should be able to report unacceptable behaviour. 100%. So let's hold Endemol and Channel 4 accountable for their failure to allow that to happen, shall we? One of the shocking things is that this was going beyond the production team. It was going out into members of the public who came into contact with him through his broadcast. Have you ever heard of groupies? Have you? Have you ever heard of groupies? For someone with a sex addiction, this is... It's, if, if there is such a thing as a sex addiction, which I think medically they have proven there is, uh, for women, there's a, there's a name for it, which I can't remember. But anyway, sex addiction. Um, you know, you would say they can't help it. We have to try and... It's like a disease. We have to help them through it. Uh, like an alcoholic who works on a television show keeps drinking all the time and they have to help him through it. Do you know what I mean? Both the broadcaster and the production company are jointly responsible for duty of care and for standards to be upheld during the production. 100%. So that's not Russell Brand's fault. That is the name of the company and Channel 4. So dispatches submitted a Freedom of Information request to Channel 4 asking if complaints have been received about Brand during his time on Big Brother and later shows. Channel 4 said it was not required under the legislation to supply such information. In response to further questions, it said it had carried out extensive document searches and found no evidence to suggest the alleged incidents were brought to their attention. Interesting. Interesting, no matter which way you look at it. Are the women lying? Probably not. Um, but if they are not lying, then it should have happened and Channel 4 should be held accountable. If it didn't happen then the women are lying and still russell brand is not you know responsible for either of those failures after his second series on big brothers e forum brand was sent to rehab once again by his agent john knoll this time for sex addiction wow okay i had no idea he could go to rehab for sex addiction while at the clinic brand wrote in his diary about his time on the show he later published it in his autobiography. Russell, you have fucked up every professional opportunity you have ever been given. Now that you've been given yet another last chance and are finally free from drugs and alcohol, you have already begun to tarnish your reputation at Big Brother. Hello. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. After being treated for sex addiction, Brand was rehired to host four more series of the lucrative Channel 4 show, now under its new name, Big Brother's Big Mouth. John Knoll Management said for legal reasons on which they cannot elaborate, they are not in a position to provide a response. Banerjee UK, who acquired Endemol Shine, said, We take our duty of care to our cast, crew and staff extremely seriously. While Endemol did have a code of conduct, support policies and escalation procedures in place during the period in question, they were not as robust as our current processes. We are sorry these women did not feel supported and protected, and in light of these serious allegations, encourage them to contact us in confidence. 
Banerjee say Russell Brand's contract did not include any clause pertaining to sexual relationships. Channel 4 said, We are appalled to learn of these deeply troubling allegations on programmes between 2004 and 2007. We have carried out extensive document searches and have found no evidence to suggest the alleged incidents were brought to the attention of Channel 4. We will continue to review this in light of any further information we receive. We will be asking the production company who produced the programme to investigate these allegations and report their findings. Today, Channel 4 has a zero-tolerance approach to unacceptable behaviour and a robust code of conduct requires all suppliers to have in place rigorous safeguarding policies and provide whistleblowing support, including Channel 4's Speak Up facility. On Russell Brand's contract forbidding sexual relations at work and unacceptable behaviour in the workplace, they say, To the best of our knowledge, the contract contained no such clause. Looking on the face of it, it's like Russell having sex with women over 18 who are seemingly consenting. So what's the big deal in that? Mm, that's pretty much summed up 90% of this video, I would say. The thing that is not OK, it's this atmosphere of women being dispensable. Women, women being dispensable. Oh, my God. Um, this has turned... This has gone from Russell Brand's a rapist to uh, is a misog misogynistic rapist. Um, women are attracted to power and money. I don't know why, but they are. Men are attracted to obtaining power and money, but not really. I don't know of any man, I'm sure there are some, who has gone out seeking the uh, sexual or other 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 in um acknowledgement from a woman purely because she has power and money I, that's just not how men operate but a lot of women are driven and drawn to power and money explain that to me that's not men making them do that that is them doing it themselves explain that to me for sex that you can pick them up at work like out of a menu they're all really harmful attitudes and it creates they're not harmful attitudes it's just the reality of men and women of sexuality women are that easy to pick up men not so much there are women out there who have sex addictions as well i still can't remember the name but you know the name i'm i'm thinking of right there are women out there with the same sort of sexual desires as, as people like Russell Brand, but they find it much harder to get sexual partners than a man with women. Explain that to me. It's just a difference between men and women. Creates an environment of permission, which then can snowball into things that are more serious. Yeah, it can, but not in this case. This is Big Brother's Big Mouth! Why, hello there! Meet your While working on Big Brother, Brand asked staff to approach audience members he later had sex with. He also focused his attention on a junior colleague. Yet the show catapulted him into the mainstream. Please welcome. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Yeah. In 2007, he fronted a series of primetime TV shows and starred in British feature film, St. Trinians. That same year, Brand published his first memoir, My Bookie Wook, which was the Christmas number one bestseller. Right, this is a perfect example of what women are like. Switch this round, right? Make him an attractive, powerful, rich woman with sexual um, uh, 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 addiction, right? How many men are going to turn up to buy her book and give her a kiss on the lips? Pamela Anderson back in the day. I'm sure some people tried, but 
it just it wouldn't happen like this and yet here are many pictures of many women desperate to give him a kiss on the lips and he's quite happy to return the favor it's a searingly honest account of sex and drug addiction bulimia and self-harm and it's written by russell brown uh, lovely hello. innocent russell brown yeah. <laughs> butter wouldn't melt Listening to BBC Radio 2, it's the Russell Brand Show, and here's your host, I am. By 2007, Brand had secured himself a top spot at the BBC with his own show on its flagship station, Radio 2, along with his co host, Matt Morgan. He'd been promoted from his slot on Radio 6 Music, where he later hinted in his autobiography that he'd been having sex with competition winners in the toilet. He implied that the station controller, Leslie Douglas, was aware of this. It's a pattern that seems to follow Russell Brand throughout his career. He misbehaves, he transgresses what would normally be acceptable within broadcasting, and he gets rewarded by a promotion, by another show, by something else. Yeah, this, this whole video now from the halfway point onwards, has just turned into... They're not even focusing on Russell Brand anymore. This is complaining about mainstream media. Uh, and the BBC, specifically. Cal Surprise. Not like they've ever been in any sort of uh, hot water like this before. We used to be on BBC Six Music. We've been, I suppose, you know, let's call it promotion. We've been promoted to Radio 2. Soon after joining the station, Brand repeatedly directed sexual comments towards a newsreader. She's erotic, that newsreader. Blimey, what a sex bomb that woman is. I'm going to go in that newsroom one of these days, and while she's reading, do you know one of my fantasies? Don't. Because <laughs> we are going to get under that desk, and we're going to unleash hell on your thighs, woman. Brand said on air that the newsreader wasn't happy, and she'd told senior colleagues, but the behaviour didn't stop. The uh, producer just told me that uh, she was we've upset her. They pointed out in the, the production side of our programme show, they go, uh, she ain't got the right to reply because she, like, we say all these things about her, like, oh, yeah, it's a she's doing the news. Imagine her just in her knickers. On one show, without his co-host Matt Morgan, Brand interviewed Jimmy Savile, who was later exposed for his sex crimes. During the interview, Brand offered up his assistant, naked. It'd be very nice to meet you one day, Mr. Jimmy Savile, just, well, you know. if you've got a sister, you could meet me by bringing her along. I, I mean, I haven't got any sisters, I but... I don't usually meet fellas, but if you've got a sister, that's OK. I've got a persistent called... Part of her job description is that anyone I demand she um, greets, meets, massages, she has to do it. She's very attractive, Jimmy. Well, that's, that's, that's a good start. R what it's kind of... start. You could send her along to do some research. Would you like her to wear... Right, OK, I'm not being pedantic or anything here. He's a comedian. He's trying to be funny. At this point, Jimmy Savile has not been convicted of anything. Um, he's trying to be funny. He, he's trying to be the character he's paid to be. Nothing more, nothing is there anything less. Anything in particular to Jimmy? I'd actually prefer her to wear nothing. Right. So you want my assistant to meet you naked? Okay. Well, that's that's not going to be that's not going to be a problem. The, that doesn't prove anything. The Jimmy Savile interview just beggars belief. Again, he is demeaning one of his female colleagues. He's basically saying, you know, she'll do whatever I want. Basically saying, I am her pimp. He's not saying, well, it's a joke, for God's sakes. Oh, it's so pathetic. What the world has become today is so pathetic. Grow, grow, grow a pair of balls, woman, right? And, um, you know, don't be so pathetic. None of what he said was ever going to happen. It's all a joke. Jimmy Savile is a sick mofo, or was a sick mofo. Just because he spoke to him whilst on the radio once, doesn't mean that he is too. Somebody should have said it's not acceptable to continue. Once again, somebody should have said that's not acceptable. 
somebody at the BBC failed to do what should have been done. Do you understand? None of what he says is written down. It's all coming off the cuff. It's all made up on the spur of the moment. And sometimes when you're being silly and messing about and making jokes and being unique and saying stuff off the cuff, you say things that you later wish you hadn't said, right? But somebody at the BBC should have said, right, you're stepping over the line there. And they did eventually. Really have these jokes about sex, uh, jokes about women. You can see a very clear pattern of unacceptable behaviour. That Right, OK, so if Russell Brown was female and making jokes about having sex with, with uh, or sending her male PA to meet somebody naked, would anyone care? No. Because it's a joke. Nobody would care at all, would they? Consistently undermines and demeans women and that leads to sexual exploitation of them. It doesn't lead to sexual exploit. Jimmy Savile did not have sex with his PA. Do you understand that? That did not happen. So the statement you just made is completely false. Members of staff were angered by Brand's behaviour. On one occasion, Brand exposed his genitals whilst urinating into a bottle. A witness claimed this was in front of colleagues and guests. One appeared to be a minor. That's unacceptable. Should never have happened. You know. But he's, he, he clearly isn't uh, ashamed to show his genitals or anything like that. Do you see what I mean? This witness gave us an account. They described the incident as shocking and entirely inappropriate. It's over there under your bottle of urine. Hey, that bottle of urine was a gift from the Queen. <laughs> right. This is BBC Radio 2 online. On Staff say a complaint was made to station controller Leslie Douglas, but no formal action was taken. A press officer acknowledged that Brand had urinated in the studio and was quoted as saying, Someone has shown him where the toilet is. So basically they they put it down to stupid, boisterous behaviour. This acting out, this behaving in a way that normal people don't behave is what made him famous. He has to keep doing that, or in his mind at that time, he must have felt like he needed to keep doing that in order to maintain his popularity. Just a few months later, production of the show was awarded to Brand's own company, Vanity Projects. The broadcasting regulator Ofcom later said there was a lack of clarity about who at the BBC had hands-on editorial oversight of the series. In October 2008, after Matt Morgan was no longer co-hosting, Brand and his guest Jonathan Ross called Faulty Towers actor Andrew Sachs and left a message on his voicemail. Brand had previously been in a sexual relationship with Sax's granddaughter. He fucked a granddaughter! <laughs> code red! Code red! I'm sorry, Mr. Fulton! No BBC executive had listened to the pre recorded show before it was broadcast. It led to 44,000 complaints and was dubbed Saxgate. So I remember when this happened, but I never actually heard it or anything. So is that all it was? Because um, if you look at what just happened there, the person who should be held accountable um, was Jonathan Ross. Yeah, I think it would be silly of me to speak without thinking because that's caused all of this. Um... To see how calm and relaxed he is here in the real world rather than when he's performing on the radio Trouble, show. So perhaps I shouldn't. I'm oh, just sorry that I've upset Mr. Sachs. Russell Brand resigned. Radio 2's controller, Leslie Douglas, and another executive also resigned. A later report by Ofcom and an internal investigation at the BBC had no reference to any previous complaints about Brand. 
Yeah, that's a BBC failure that they have had many times over with many different people, correct? Russell Brand needed to be tackled directly. He needed to have a very experienced executive producer who would take him on and stop things in their tracks. He was allowed to say the unsayable, he was allowed to do the unthinkable and consistently got away with it. Because that was his character. That is what made him famous in the first place. That's what he was basically hired to do. They were pushing the boundaries um, of what is acceptable you know somebody has to do that we can't all stay within rigid lines for our entire lives sometimes somebody has to step out of the you know just step over that line a little bit and see if it's okay see how far we can push things you know none of what R russell in fact this woman here speaking on the television screen right in front of you right now back in the 1850s would have been considered completely unacceptable not that television existed then i understand but the point that a woman could be in a position that she's in dictating to men Sorry, how, how i don't know that one that's alexa sticking her nose in where it's not wanted that would have been considered completely unacceptable okay that is how things change all right there's no point looking back and saying that wasn't acceptable at the time because what you're doing wasn't acceptable back in the 1800s either matt morgan said i stopped working with russell brand several years ago during the time i worked with him i was never aware of any allegations of serious sexual misconduct against him i absolutely condemn all forms of mistreatment of women Looking back on the time I spent working on radio at the BBC, I am regretful to learn that a show I was part of made colleagues uncomfortable at times. A representative for Leslie Douglas said, I'm sorry, but... That is, this is so weak. This is just getting worse. Ms Douglas did not at any time encourage, enable and or fail herself to take any adequate steps within her power with regard to the conduct of Mr Brand of which she was aware. She is presently unable to provide any further information which may be relevant to the matters raised in the programme due to the obligations owed by her to her former employer. The BBC did not respond to questions about complaints being ignored by senior employees. They said, Russell Brand left the BBC after a serious editorial breach, as did the controller of Radio 2 at the time. The BBC reviewed what had happened. We hope that demonstrates that the BBC takes issues seriously and is prepared to act. I'm sorry, the BBC didn't act. They resigned, correct? But the BBC didn't fire them. They all resigned. So the BBC did not do anything. Over successive years, the BBC has evolved its approach to how it manages talent and how it deals with complaints or issues raised. Yeah, and for bloody good reason too, right? We have clear expectations around conduct at work. These are set out in employment contracts, the BBC values, the code of conduct and the anti-bullying and harassment policy. We appreciate there are two outstanding freedom of information requests. We apologise for this. Although Brand's time at the BBC had ended in disgrace, he was finding new opportunities across the Atlantic. Well, what are you going to do in Los Angeles? I've got to do a special for Comedy Central, start rehearsing my film with Judd Apatow, and I'm making a film with Helen Mirren. In the US, his profile continued to grow. Come on, mate, anyone can pull it off for 10 minutes. I'm nice for 10 minutes. <laughs> so you're not like this all the time. You don't want to be around when the laughter stops. Uh, see, that's what I was saying. This, that just kind of reinforces what I've been saying the whole time. He is performing. He's acting. 
that's not his real personality. He is being entertaining by being loud and obtuse and ridiculous. That is his character. That is what made him famous. But you've seen videos in this video of him being just very melancholy, very normal. That's the reality of celebrityism. By 2010, Russell Brand had transformed into a Hollywood A-lister. He was now living in the US and starring in one blockbuster after another. After a whirlwind marriage to pop icon Katy Perry, Brand's fame had reached new heights. The outrageous British comedian whose wild antics have taken him all the way to the studios of Hollywood. Things was getting a bit fruity out there. All right, Liz, <laughs> we goodbye. Were. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's been really a wonderful experience. <laughs> See you later, Liz. <laughs> Russell. All right, that's OK. <laughs> Russell, I can undo your bra just like this. <laughs> It was. I just say I've also got that skill, just to share that information. At this time, that Nadia alleges she was raped by Brand. Okay. Um. So the way he was behaving with that presenter just then—that's his character behaving that way, but also a little bit of himself behaving that way. Um. She could quite rightly have taken umbrage with the way he was behaving there. It could have, like, really... She could have kneed him in the nuts. She could have told him point blank to his face, do not do that again. But she kind of played along with it, and, you know, there's a whole new kind of argument about that. Uh, and, you know, obviously she didn't feel like he should complain at the time. But, again, that's a very small snippet of, you know, maybe they spent like a couple of hours together maybe they were both playfully sexually playful together the whole way through and he just took it a little bit further than he should or you don't know for sure what happened prior to that particular incident but interestingly they're not making any that's for me that's one of the worst things i've seen the way he just behaved then but they hardly draw any attention to it at all which i find incredibly odd and just months later, another woman says she was left traumatised after an experience with him. Right, so one's traumatised, one's raped. Now this is, they've got, what, 18 minutes now, 22 minutes now to convince me that this is justifiable for him losing everything he's got. I moved to LA. I moved out here for just, for chasing my dreams. I met him at an AA meeting and he pursued me like right away. Yeah, so she, he pursued her right away. That's because, you know, he has, he's sexually confident, he's got lots of money and he, he's not ashamed or frightened of doing it. Plus, he's got sexual addiction or whatever. Um, so, I mean, just pointing that out is just, it's, it's almost pointless saying that because we all know that's what he, that is what, what he's like. That's who he is. That's what he's always been like. I slept with him willingly. Like, for the record, willingly. OK, for the record, you were sexual partners. He sold me a dream, very manipulative, very, like, you know, you're the greatest thing. Like, want to, you know, have my babies. Women are so easily duped by men who say things like this. You know, I realised very young that I could manipulate people 
And before I got, before I became an adult, I decided I wasn't going to use that skill um, to manipulate people. But you'll find that most of the most successful people in the world, most of the most talented people in the world, celebrities and stuff, and CEOs of some of the biggest companies, they chose a different way to deal with their ability to manipulate people. They embraced it and used it to their benefit. I felt that that was unjust and unkind and inconsiderate and just not acceptable behavior. So I made a decision from when I was still a young man, before I became an adult, that I was not going to use that ability to manipulate people to get what I wanted. And I've stuck to that my entire life. But I do know how easy it is to manipulate people. It's incredibly easy. And women especially are easy to manipulate. I'm sorry to say that. Not all women. There are exceptions to every rule. But I guarantee you, if there was a scientific experiment, women could be manipulated to do things that they shouldn't do or don't want to do a hell of a lot easier than men. And that's just a fact. Ridiculous shit. But nothing like nothing further. Sometime after their first sexual encounter, Phoebe says Brand called her and asked her to work with him. I, of course, am like just so, you know, big break, eager, like, yes, of course. So I took the job and it went really well. He had me on for a long period. We did a lot of stuff together. He'd have a comedy show and, like, would invite a bunch of us and, like, my friends would come. It became what felt like a friendship. Everything we did work-wise revolved around his sexual behaviour with other people. And because I had slept with him, it was like... It didn't hurt, but it hurt, you know? Right, OK, so she obviously isn't capable of distinguishing a sexual relationship from a relationship. She was still clinging on to the hope, the fact, the possibility that maybe one day they might get together and get married and have babies. Uh, so, OK, so that already is a, a very, very uh, important thing to note about this woman. He's been hurt. I've just never seen any man have power and like manipulation over women. Like I watched this guy, I mean, pulled women out of the audience, kicking us out of his dressing room and fucking them in the dressing room, you know, just revolving door of women every day. I mean, five plus women a day, just absolute mayhem. Five women a day. Holy shish kabang. That's a sexual addiction right there. I'm not sure I could have managed five a day in my prime. No, maybe I could, but only just. And not every bloody day. Phoebe remembers working at... In fact, <laughs> I don't want to go into too much detail, but yes, uh, five a day is possible. Have done it, been there. Um... Not with five different people, though. Anyway, let's move on. Anne's house before they left to go to a show. They were running late, so Phoebe left her belongings behind. We came home together in the same car. And we came back to the house and I was like, OK, cool, I'll go pack up and I'll leave. Then the assistant left to run an errand. And without me realising it, I was left alone with him at the house. He came into the room. I can't remember if he was naked or if he was in underwear, but he ended up naked at some point. And he started, like, chasing me. I was almost laughing because I was like, there's no way this is happening. And it got a little more aggressive. And then I think I realised this is not a joke. Like, this is really... 
he, he's really serious. And I went to walk back out to get out of the bedroom and the, the door had been locked, which I hadn't seen him do. And he grabbed me and got me on the bed. I was fully clothed and he was naked at this point and he held me down and he was just aggressively trying to, you know, fuck me. And I saw something come over his eyes, I swear to God, like black. His eyes had no more color, they were black. Um, okay. There are different ways to have sex. Aggressive sex is one of those ways. Some women really like it. Some women really hate it. Most women are somewhere in between. Generally, when you're in a loving relationship, that kind of sex, unless you're both into it, is not something that you would experience regularly, if ever at all. Um, but... When your relationship with somebody is based purely on sex, just a sex relationship, it's almost like you decide at the time where you take that sexual experience and what you try and what you don't try and what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. Um, you know, I have no experience of this. But I'm old enough and wise enough to know that it exists and many people are sort of enjoy this kind of thing. It's not for me, but, you know, lots of people, well, I'll say lots of people, there are people out there who do like this kind of sexual, um, well, you know, not being in serious relationships, but having lots of sex with lots of different people, etc., 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 and different kinds of sexual uh, acts that you can perform and so on so um what she's describing right now with the black eyes you know maybe he was on drugs again there's a really good chance he was on drugs again um maybe he wasn't maybe uh, you know th this very much falls back on the first thing i said in this video unless you were there or you have video evidence like to, su to support her statement there is no way to know what the reality of that situation was. You know, she already indicated that she'd had sex with him and she was hurt by the fact that he was having sex with other people. And she also said that it was kind of fun. He was chasing her around the room naked and she thought it was kind of funny. Uh, there are many alarm bells there. It's like, well, you should have said no right at the beginning. Not, do you know what I mean? So without the video footage evidence proving what she's saying, it's just hearsay. There is nothing definitive here, not definitive enough. A different person literally entered his body. And I was screaming and I was like... And, <laughs> referring back to something I said earlier, when a man gets an erection, you know, jokingly or seriously, the blood leaves his brain and enters his penis. Men are different when they're fully aroused. They just, they really are. Like, what are you doing? Like, stop. You're my friend. I love you. Please don't do this. You're my friend. I love you. Please don't do this. Talk about mixed messages. I don't want to do this. Like, he, I think he had his hands down my trousers, but I was fighting so hard and I was screaming so hard. And something snapped and he heard me and he got off of me and I got up and was like what the fuck and he flipped the fuck out on me like fuck you you know just like super angry and I'm sobbing I run to the front door grab my shoes and I run barefoot to my car right so uh Again, there's there's a few gaps in this story. Uh, why does she leave her stuff behind? You know, uh, she's clearly hurt by him having sexual intercourse with lots of different women. She obviously felt like they maybe had something special, so she's resentful, and yet she is still 
running around the room whilst he's naked. You know, you, you need to set your stool out a lot clearer than that and say, whoa, 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 what the f hell are you doing? Put your clothes back on. No, we, we are. We don't have that kind of relationship anymore. But you see, from from Russell Brown's perspective, and until you tell him otherwise, you're just sexual partners. You know, whenever the mood takes you, if you fancy a bit of him, you give him a call. If he fancies a bit of you, he gives you a call. That is, you know, that's not how I want to live my life, but that is how people live their lives. And, you know, there is no... Until you definitively stop that relationship then that's the relationship you have. And if you're running around having fun whilst he's chasing you naked, then it's all part of a game. You, the game, the sex games have begun. And where the sex games end, obviously she clearly did kick off and he clearly did realise, well, hang on a minute, we're, we're, not, we're not doing sex games here. You're actually really fucking angry. Uh... But again, you know, she put herself in that situation and created that situation. And I bet you, I guarantee you, it never happened again after that night. He says some of Brand's US colleagues were outside the house waiting for him to join a meeting. And all the people that he had the meeting with were standing in the fucking driveway. Years later, I ran into one of those guys on another job and he pulled me aside and he said to me, I have never forgiven myself for not running in that house to save you. I heard you screaming and I didn't know what to do. And we were all so scared of him and I didn't do anything. And I'm sorry. Well, fair play to that bloke, whoever that was, for apologising to her. Um, yeah. Clearly, not acceptable behaviour, but not rape either. Sexually assaulted. You see, now, this is... The problem with sexually assaulted is she was running round the room whilst he was naked and having a bit of fun. He was participating in the sex game prior to deciding she didn't want to be a part of it anymore. And I'm, I'm sorry, but it's not a light switch. You know, for some people, the, the boundaries are, are very different. You know, it very much depends on the relationship you have with somebody. And... Yeah, I, I just, I feel like this is very weak, very meek, and, and not really definitive enough. I'm sure uh, she didn't want to participate in that sexual act after a certain point, after it had started. And before anything happened, she stopped him, and then they had an argument, and that was it. And I bet you they've never had sex since. And seeing as uh, she, you know has already admitted that she was hurt by him having sexual relationships with other people. She probably feels even more hurt and used and unappreciated now than she did back then uh, as well. But, you know, um, yeah, horrible experience. I just don't feel like it's an illegal thing. It doesn't seem illegal to me. You know, again, without video footage evidence, you've, you've got to... You can only go on what's definitive, and there's nothing really definitive here. It's just her word against his word. I then start receiving phone calls from Russell. He's so apologetic. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I Please, 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 please forgive me. I didn't mean to. A few days... Yeah, I'm so apologetic. I... What did he say? Doesn't mention that bit. Maybe he said, I completely misread the situation. I thought we were still having that kind of relationship. I didn't realise you didn't want to have sex with me anymore. If you'd have just said that, then I, I would have known and we wouldn't have done anything. Maybe that's what he said. We'll never know, will we? ...after the incident. Phoebe says she had to return to set. 
She thinks Brand found out she told a friend about her alleged assault. I remember Russell getting me towards the bathroom and turning the water on so nobody could hear him talking. And it was basically like, sexual assault is a serious allegation, and if you're fucking serious, I need to know because you'll be hearing from my lawyer. That seems perfectly reasonable. That's exactly how you should behave. I don't know what I said at that point. You know, like, I don't remember that day well at all. Uh, um, I, I'm going to say this very lightly, and I don't mean it to be disrespectful, but she is well playing the victim card here. Um, whether or not she's a victim is still unclear. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he says, well, hang on a minute. You're accusing me of sexual assault. If if you are seriously accusing me of sexual assault, then you'll be hearing from my lawyer. That seems perfectly reasonable if there was no sexual assault, right? I think I was in a trauma response. I don't know if I just completely disassociated from what was happening. I mean, it was really tough. He was a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. That is supposed to be a safe place that's supposed to be like a sanctuary well then you probably shouldn't have hooked up with him and had sex with him should you and after that like it's not it's not one way traffic it's not they all have to behave but you can do what you want no 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 it's a safe haven but you have to set those boundaries yourself you, you don't go and have sex with someone in aa and then complain AA has failed to do, failed to keep you two apart. I mean, what a load of bollocks. Grow up. You're a grown woman. I almost drank. I was fucked up. And I just didn't know how to process it. I felt like I had nowhere to go. I didn't feel safe. It felt like I couldn't go to meetings. I was too afraid to see him. I never heard from him again. I never saw him again. What did I predict? Mm -hmm. What did I predict? As soon as she said, we don't have that kind of relationship, he went, fine. I, I will never bother you again. I'm at peace with it. She's at peace with it. That in itself says a lot. When I think about having children, having a daughter, and how this had happened to her, you know, that's why I'm talking to you. That it, there's a name for that where you um, project your failures and fears onto your children. Um, I forget what the name is, but it sounds like... I mean, clearly, if the woman's been an alcoholic, she is not good with willpower. Um, and fair play to her for going to AA and getting herself clean or whatever. I hope she's still clean. Um, but, yeah, I'm sorry, lady. You made some shit decisions. And do you know who's responsible for that? You are. You had sex with a celebrity, then tried to use that relationship to get yourself into uh, a career where you could earn lots of money and be really famous yourself, perhaps. And, um, you know, maybe you were still hoping to get into a relationship with Russell Brand. Who knows? And it didn't work out the way you wanted. And now you're behaving like this. I'm sorry. That may not be 100% accurate. But there is nothing here to prove that that isn't the truth. So this is just he say, she say stuff. Um, with one possible collaboration of the executive who said, I'm really sorry. I should have gone in and helped you. Did they go and find that guy? Have they got his interview here? If they haven't, it's hearsay. A year later, for the first time, a sexual allegation about Brand is made public. His former girlfriend, Jordan Martin, published a book under a thinly disguised pseudonym revealing intimate details of their relationship which she describes as controlling and manipulative. 
The book contains her description of an incident where he got angry and then sexually assaulted her. Jordan also told her story to the Mail on Sunday, but when the newspaper printed, the reference to the assault had been removed. That's interesting. I wonder why that happened. Um, have you ever had uh, like makeup sex where you're both really angry? There's like makeup sex when you you're still angry, so the sex is a little bit rougher than usual because you know it just is. It's just one of those things. Everybody knows about it. Nobody. It's it's not a thing. You know, it just sounds a little bit like maybe they were having an argument and, you know, again, without video evidence, it's very difficult to know. She says she believes the newspaper was asked to take out the line. She didn't want to take part in this film, but stands by her allegations. She stands by her allegations so much that she doesn't feel this video is accurate then, I guess. Oh, Jesus! It was like, he threw a bra, but he threw it aggressively. It was sort of a bit sexually exciting and a little bit frightening, as all sexual interaction ought be. Thank you. Daniel Sloss is an established name in comedy and has been performing since 2007. Never heard of him. Maybe this is an opportunity for him to get his name uh, in lights. He's heard allegations about Brand's treatment of women on the That's hearsay. comedy circuit. This is scary. This is intimidating. And if I'm scared of this, and, and there's almost no consequences to me, what do people who have suffered uh, and, and been subject to his alleged behaviours, how, how must they feel? Who gives a fuck? Because this is all... Hearsay. You've heard about it. You haven't seen anything. You've never witnessed anything. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything to, factually to be accurate. This is not journalism. This is bullshit. I, I could not say something. So from the second I started, he was a big name. Big, big, a big, big household name. Everyone in the UK knows who he is. If you, if you were a comedian and you got to gig with him, that would be you gigging with, you know, a celebrity. There were many stories. It wasn't just coming from one person or one... You know why there were many stories? Because he was having sex with five women a day. Five different women a day. How do, how do stories not evolve from somebody who is that promiscuous? People, you know, it was different incidents um, over different years and of varying degrees of severity. All right. I'm stood in artist bars with agents, promoters, channel commissioners, and I'm hearing these allegations and these rumours. Rumours? Should Russell Brand have all his money taken away because of rumours? I think not. I think the law actually has something to say against that, does it not? About Russell in the same room that these people are in, and then... Later on, he would be in a movie, he would be on a television show, he would be hosting something. He was still being employed. I know that there are groups that set up by uh, female comedians where they warn each other of comedians and agents, people in the industry who to uh, avoid, and I know for many, many years that women have been warning each other about Russell. Yeah, because 
it will literally screw anything that has a pulse. So, um, I mean, doesn't everybody know that about Russell Brand? Do you need a special group to tell you that? I don't think so. I know there are comedians who have made references in jokes to Russell's alleged crimes and have either been asked or told to not do those jokes anymore. Hearing that is... Okay, give us a name and an example. Intimidating. It's scary. You don't know where these people are coming from and how high up it goes. Questions that should have been asked uh, about Russell before he was employed for certain things, I do not believe they were asked. But you do look at people who are in higher positions of authority in this industry and think to yourself, well, there is more you could have done. Yep, once again, um, there are things that Channel 4, BBC and the company that uh, employed him early on could and should have done. So once again, this is not aimed, this is no longer a criticism of Russell Brand, but this is a criticism of these, you know, media establishments who value money over morals. Right, so this is the wrap up, last 10 minutes. Divine sexual female energy. Yes, thanks, thanks, thanks. I'm saying that not only because it's true, but also because it's nearly the end of the show now. And I know if I say stuff like that about women and divine sexual energy at the end of the evening, there's no way I ain't getting laid after the show tonight. Uh, I mean, if that isn't honesty, I don't know what is. He's literally telling them, I am manipulating you to feel sexually aroused so that one of you or some of you come back and, and we have sex. He's literally telling them that, and I bet you he still got laid. You can hear the women shouting, Woohoo, yeah, I'll be out at the back. I'm well up By for now, that. Russell Men don't behave that way, on, uh, in my experience. You know, if some woman was on stage saying that, I'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Brand had been at the forefront of British comedy and television for over a decade. He was beginning to find new audiences as he started to voice his opinion on UK politics. Is it true you don't even vote? Yeah, no, I don't vote. I remember this. This is the first time I actually took him even marginally seriously. Because he wasn't being, in this interview, if you haven't seen it, he wasn't being Russell Brand, the lunatic, sexual predator, whatever dude. He was just being a normal-ish person. Well, how do you have any authority to talk about politics then? Has, no, let me finish, mate, let me finish. You no, know, probably I don't agree with, apart from my admiration of firefighters, much that Russell probably... Pay says, their pensions but, then, love. Well, I'll, we can come to Excuse that. Excuse the sexist language I'm working on there. Oh, there you go. So he's aware of his sexist language, love. See, back in the day, back in London, and, and I think he's from Kent, you know, saying, thanks, love, cheers, love, to a woman you don't know, was considered polite and, and thoughtful. In Cornwall, when I lived in Cornwall, I would say, thank you, my lovely. It's, it's exactly the same thing. It's just a... It's a, it's a, it's a slightly... Friendlier way of saying thank you, that's all. One of the things it's designed to make the person you're saying it to feel a little bit special about themselves, you know? It's not manipulation in that sense, it's just, you know, it brightens somebody's day a little bit. Or it used to. These days you've got women like this who, uh, who, who would literally cut your penis off for saying, OK, love, thank you. Or thank you, love. You know what I mean? Things that people really don't like is men talking over women. <laughs> See? On these types of shows, and yes. our voices not being heard, and apologise. And he apologised, which he shouldn't have done. 
Alice, who alleges she'd been sexually assaulted by Brand eight years earlier, when she was 16, now had a career in television and was working for Channel 4. Well, that worked out pretty well for her then, didn't it? Almost like she used Russell Brand to get a leg up in the business. It was a meeting that I was sat in and it was with a production company and a group of commissioning editors. There were discussions about a show that was going to happen and who the presenter was going to be. And it looked like the most likely candidate was going to be Russell. There were a couple of people in the room that raised concerns about him because it came to light that there'd been previous situations where he'd been inappropriate with staff members. The solution that was offered was that we would take the female staff off the crew and then if there were women there, then, then they would never be alone with him. I was in disbelief. Alice says one commissioning editor in the room strongly opposed what had been suggested. Right, OK, so they'll never be alone with him. Not because he is a, a rapist, but because, for some reason, women can't seem to resist him. That seems to be the reasoning behind this. That's not illegal. Brand wasn't hired as a presenter on a Channel 4 show in 2014, but opportunities with the broadcaster kept coming in the years that followed. I'm a good role model for a child. <laughs> never yield the sex appeal, Jim, never! There's always opportunities, there's always flies to be caught. He comes across sometimes as a caricature of himself. Oh, that's not true, you've completely misunderstood! <laughs> So you've got this great big vagina and this tiny... That's it, Prue. And this... That's why I came on this show. And he also appeared on other channels. You aren't allowed. You're enabled to... to enabled begin. is a good word. Yeah. Yes, I suppose if you're in a position of some success, people will let you be a nutter as long as they're making money out of it. When you... What have I been saying throughout this whole thing? He was made famous because of his extrovert behaviour and that is why they gave him money. So that is why he's continued to do that. He is doing what he's been paid to do. And the reason why they let him carry on doing it is because they are making money out of it. My God, this is such a shockingly poor bit of... Uh, bit of... Um, uh, 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 of television uh, that I've seen. This is sacrilege what's happening to him. I'm not saying by the way, that he isn't guilty. But I am saying that right now, today, at the moment of making this video, he is not being found guilty, nor has he been charged, as far as I know. And this entire documentary that's supposed to be proving his guilt, I'm sorry, it's just a pile of shit. This is terrible journalism. If you look back at that promiscuous lifestyle, do you think, does that appall you? Do you think, God, I was disgusted? Look at her. Look at her face. Look how angry she is. She wants him to condemn himself. This is, uh, this is modern Britain right here. That men are not allowed to be men. And you should be ashamed of your sexual desires. That's what she wants him to say. Do you look at your daughter now and think, I hope she never meets Simply, Russell Brown when she grows up? Don't get so up. worked up about it. It's only a rhetorical device. Does it appall you? No, my dear. So, yeah. It was a good question she asked, but she was pushing for a, for a specific kind of answer there. You know, I don't, I don't... I didn't know he had a daughter, but I don't suspect he would like his daughter to meet somebody like him. But then maybe he is, you know, like the hippies from the 60s, it's all about free love. Do you remember that? And how acceptable that was back in the 60s and 70s? You know, maybe he really does feel that way and he doesn't mind and encourages her to explore her sexuality in any way she likes. Personally, I'm a bit more frigid than that. But, uh, you know, maybe he isn't. And by the way, that's not illegal to be that way. 
In 2020, Alice contacted Brand's literary agents to tell them about her experience with him when she was 16 years old. I phoned the officers and I asked to speak to his agent. Somebody asked what it was regarding and I said, that's regarding what's all Brand being a sex offender. Full circle. I said, I want you to be aware of what your client does. But I was told, OK, well, he's away at a wellness retreat at the moment. I'll contact him and we'll have another phone call. His lawyer emailed me, was very aggressive, said very clearly that I was... Not being funny, um, lawyers are aggressive people. And really, genuinely, they're not aggressive. They're just assertive, very assertive and they want to make things very clear and be very concise about what they say and make sure that you understand exactly what they say. That is how lawyers speak to people because that is their goddamn job. And she is just a, still seems to be so very naive and childlike. After money, I implied that it was almost blackmail what I was doing. So she has contacted them three times and they think they're trying to obtain money from him. Okay. I pointed out I've never mentioned money. I've never asked for money. You're the only person that's ever mentioned money. That was how that communication ended. So why were you ringing them then? Drama. You can't just leave it there. If you weren't ringing for money, why did you ring them? Why didn't you ring the police? justify your behavior this is terrible journalism over recent years russell brand has stepped away from mainstream television and gathered over 28 million followers across his social media platforms one breath and charm online brand discusses conspiracy theories and often takes aim at the mainstream media the media, our friends, our allies, telling us the truth and definitely not amping up some stories and ignoring others. Yeah, they don't do that, do they? In order to shape our reality to benefit them and their corporate partners. That's exactly... See, I genuinely believe that to be true. And I'm not a fan of Russell Brand, but what he just said then is 100% accurate. And um, mainstream media, mainstream media have absolutely ruined YouTube. Uh, and uh, yeah, I agree with uh, what he's saying right there. He also gives advice on relationships and addiction and makes millions in the process. That's not illegal. And he's probably helped a lot of people by doing that. 12 step recovery, not just for nut jobs and wackos, although nut jobs and wackos are, of course, welcome. If you're having a lot of one night stands, I think like as long as everything's consensual and no one's being hurt, not you or the other person, what does it matter? There you go. See, free love. That's it's... There is nothing shocking in this documentary at all so far, except for the allegations which have not been categorically proven one way or the other. Offline, Brand immerses himself in groups which support vulnerable women. In July of this year. Do you know why he does that? Because he knows how easily women are manipulated. I bet you he tells them. I bet you at some point he has told vulnerable women not to allow yourself to be manipulated. He hosted a wellness festival with most of the proceeds going to women only addiction charities. A week after being asked to respond to the allegations in this film, Brand posted this video. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question 
Is there another agenda at play? What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. There are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. OK, so he's saying he has witnesses. Uh, I would love... If, if they've obtained this video, why didn't they follow up and ask him who these witnesses were? Because obviously... They accused him before this video came out, right? Because otherwise they wouldn't be able to have had this video footage of him uh, refuting those uh, accusations, right? I see him online and it, it triggers me. It hurts me. <sighs> now he's a wholesome family man who's like the king of wellness. He did wrong things. But it's almost as if there's no retribution for that. I, at the moment, she just sounds bitter and twisted and resentful and jealous of what he's achieved. It could have been nipped in the bud at the beginning of his career. Had he been called up on it, had he been held accountable, for his actions. They knew that he was at the best inappropriate at work and unprofessional. That's the higher ups at Channel 4. I think that's, uh, that's accurate. Is inappropriate um, and unprofessional at times, most certainly. And Channel 4 and BBC have a lot to answer for. Well, that's at the BBC. But they were making lots and lots and lots of money out of him behaving that way. Yeah. They've all had a hand in facilitating it. They absolutely they have. Make... All this dispatches video has done is make me think mainstream media are just as bad as I thought they were. Accountable too. How many people walked into comedy, met Russell, had a bad experience with him and left? Do you know what I mean? How <laughs> Culturally, what are we missing? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. Neither do you. It's a pointless statement in a documentary. What an absolutely ridiculous statement to make in a documentary trying to prove that Russell Brand is a sexual um, miscreant. What a, a totally random, pointless thing to throw in there. He went from being a heroin addict live on air on MTV to a sex addict live on air on E4 to a predator live on air on Radio 6 and Radio 2. Predator? A predator of what? He kept progressing. Nothing held him back. And so he thought he could do whatever he wanted. Well, that's because Channel 4, BBC and whoever else should have said that stepping over the line too far didn't. I've been waiting since I was 16 for it to hit the papers or for it to be on the news that he's been arrested or that somebody's reported him and it's stopped the abuse. As far as I can tell, there's no abuse. As Russell Brand explained, promiscuous, fully consenting, sexual encounters with multiple partners where nobody gets hurt. That's what he promotes and so far... I don't think there's I don't think there's any difference. If you have a story, email dispatches at channel4.co.uk. Really? That's just opening it up to anybody to make an accusation. And let's be honest, if he's got five different sexual partners a day, there's a lot of women out there who will think, oh, I can make a bit of money out of this. Now, hey, well, don't get up, don't get angry with me. There are women like that out there. You know it to be true, right? We all know that to be true. And women like that make, you know, women who have been abused make it more difficult for them to get the justice they deserve. So let's be angry at those women, not at me for just mentioning them. Um, yeah, I'm really disappointed. I I think Russell Brand has been totally attacked, um, unjustifiably so. In this country, you are innocent until proven guilty. 
so uh, I don't see how they can be doing what they're doing to him and still be within the realms of the law. I think he will have good opportunity and good grounds to sue Channel 4 dispatches and um, maybe even BBC and God knows who else. These five women even, possibly. What a disgrace. <clears throat> Just to be 100% uh, clear, I don't agree with uh, any kind of sexual aggression or assault or uh, any kind of sexual offence. Women should be respected and rape is completely unacceptable. But having a good grasp of the reality of the world, not all women are trustworthy, honest, genuine people. And I know this from first-hand experience. So you must be careful. The difference between those, these women and Russell Brand is Russell Brand has seemingly been very open and honest about his promiscuity throughout his entire life. Whereas these women, not so much. And there's a lot of holes in their story. I'm sorry, this doesn't convince me of anything. And I feel very bad for Russell Brand. Why did I make this video? because I'm politically motivated, and I hope you are too. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.